My mother was a missionary in the early 1950s to Central America, met my father who was Honduran, uh, married, came to the United States, raised the family in Indiana, which is where she's from. Uh, but she was clearly a woman who was not the normal type woman, uh, you know, to go by herself into the mission field, learn a language, learn a culture, fall in love with that culture. And then, so I was uh, certainly impacted by her life. I was fortunate to have two strong parents in my life that each found ways to share their unconditional love with my three siblings and I. However, it was my mother that instilled a spirit of adventure that prepared me to visit new places and meet new people. I'd worked with students for the last 20 years on design projects, hybrid electric vehicles, race cars, you, know, you name it. But I was very interested in getting involved with more uh, lasting projects, uh, projects that directly impacted human need in a positive way. What drove me to develop a humanitarian engineering program at the Colorado School of Mines was seeing the excitement of the students involved and the heightened motivation that comes with actually doing a real physical project that are going to better the lives of people. And to learn about other cultures and accept them, at, not as the other, but as another human being. Me gusta el sol y la mujer cuando llora, el buen cigarro y la guitarra española, saltar paredes y abrir las ventanas y el mar mojándome los pies. Me gusta estar tirado. I'm going to tell you a story about uh, Colinas de Suiza, Honduras a project that I worked on with students from Colorado School of Mines. <laughs> Hurricane Mitch hit the country in uh, October of 1998. It killed about 18,000 people in Honduras and also neighboring Nicaragua, Guatemala. Uh, devastated the country for a time. Um, and these people were living at that time in lower lying areas and had been moved uh, by the government to these hills called Colinas de Suiza. And they were given land, but not much of anything else. And so they had to build houses out of whatever they could find. Beginning in 2004, with students from the Colorado School of Mines, and we'd also made contact with the Honduran University and worked closely with the students from that university, forming uh, teams from both cultures walked throughout the village, going door to door, asking people what they thought their most immediate needs were. And by and large, uh, everybody said that potable water was the biggest need they had at that point. Water was being delivered by truck. It cost them on average uh, 600 lempitas, which uh, at that time was 40% uh, of their income. Uh, for a minimum wage and so it was it was difficult and uh, it was challenging for them to to really make inroads against poverty ya les había un día que sin agua los podía de vacío hasta donde mi mamá iba a traer las cubetillas para poder hacerles comida todo eso solamente les ha podido que me le salían a las hipotas por y la doctora me dijo que por no bañarse In 2007, after talking with a, uh, a Mines alum who was associated with the Plastic Pipe and Fitting Association, it's a manufacturer's association of plastic pipe and fittings, 
we were able to convince him that this was a worthwhile project to get involved with, and he ended up uh, convincing 11 companies to donate 72 tons of plastic pipe and fittings. And with that, then, not only the people, but also the local municipality and their water and sanitation department decided to get involved with the project, too. I thought at that time it was important for the people to become uh, involved, not only in their manual labor, but also financially, because uh, a lot of reading I had done about uh, sustainability and, and community development, uh, is that they had to have some skin in the game, basically. So the, the people's responsibility was to build the storage tank. And in 2011, we were able to finally dedicate the water system. There were still issues, but water was flowing. As always with a project like this, there are challenges that arise. For instance, communication. How do you communicate with 10,000 people or 1,500 families? It's virtually impossible. Uh, maybe a few hundred people would show up to meetings. It would be announced by a loudspeaker on top of a pickup truck running through the village to let people know that we were going to have a meeting at some time, some day. Uh, it was just a very awkward way of communicating. In fact, in 2007, I returned to the village with one of my colleagues, Kay Godel Gingebach, who has a PhD in anthropology, because I realized I needed some help. And we met with nine small groups throughout the village, different locations. And we actually had a good positive experience with that in 2007. I wanted more of that type of communication. So this idea of circles became very important in providing a mechanism for communicating with people, them communicating with us, us communicating with them, them communicating with themselves. Uh, another aspect which was a challenge is uh, there were already water businesses in place. They were selling water delivered by truck. Uh, if, as I did a calculation on the size of that business, I was astounded. You know, it could have been as much as $80,000 a month. So they weren't entirely sure they wanted a new water system in place. I mean, there were, there were forces in play that wanted to maintain the status quo, in other words. We did experience quite a few acts of vandalism. I cannot accuse the water businesses for the vandalism because nothing has been proven. The vandalism could have been the result of frustration over the significant time it was taking to realize the completed water project, or simple thievery for economic reasons. To me, the vandalism was a symptom of insufficient community engagement in the water project and pointed to the need for more effective communication. Developing a sense of trust with the people is of utmost importance. To achieve the people's trust requires significant time and consistency in communication. In 2010, uh, I was looking at uh, retirement from the Colorado School of Mines. I wanted to actually get more involved with humanitarian engineering projects. I'd known about uh, a colleague, Ed Cecil, who was teaching a service learning class, which culminated in a trip to Honduras where the students would work on a housing project. And so I decided to go investigate the, and work with them uh, after my retirement met Norma Mejia, who was working with the Heifer International Project, and actually the, the Heifer projects would start with Norma. Norma would work with small circles of trust, she would call them, uh, mostly women in some of the poorest regions of Honduras, starting mainly to improve their self-confidence. She would start with, um, well, what sort of things do you know? 
And the people would typically say, young ladies would say, well, I just don't know anything. I can't do anything. And Norma would say, well, uh, whose house is that there? Oh, that's my house. Oh, well, who built the house? Oh, I build the houses. So you build houses. And in that way, try to build up the confidence of the people first and then start with small projects, uh, some of them micro enterprises, to give, help them develop their own confidence so they could move to larger projects and then eventually tie the circles together until she had the whole community. Then they were ready for a, a housing project. And so that became the impetus for the Svetzer funded project. Uh, engaged Norma to share the circle development process with leaders of the community in Colinas de Suiza. From that, we started about 20 small circles. They became enthralled at the idea of microenterprise because the economy is such at the forefront of their thoughts. I mean, getting food for the next day for their families are very important to them. So we went with that. In the United States, we are currently concerned with immigration policy changes. We seem to be especially concerned with the illegal immigration that has come through our southern border with Mexico. I've encountered examples of Hondurans who, for economic reasons, have prior experience as illegal aliens working in the U.S., and who in reality prefer to live in Honduras with their families. Many have found satisfaction and economic stability by engaging their families in small business development activities within their local communities. Para mí este proyecto es muy importante porque me está ayudando a salir adelante, a, me está ayudando en los proyectos que teníamos en la empresa porque estábamos estancados. Este proyecto puede ser sostenible a través de una buena administración y trabajando los recursos que se nos han brindado, compartiendo los conocimientos con otras personas y transmitiéndolos a toda la comunidad y aún fuera de la comunidad, eh, llevándolo a lugares donde hay personas que no tienen conocimientos. Violence has taken a significant toll throughout Latin America during the recent global economic downturn. There are many complicated reasons for this recent troubling trend. However, I've found hope in the many dedicated and highly motivated educators and community leaders that love their communities and are working hard at local levels to reverse this trend. Dos caminos donde prácticamente eh, donde está absorbido por la por la marginalidad. Los jóvenes están carentes de necesidades prioritarias como son eh, la recreación, la música, el arte, la pintura y todo esto eh, como no existe entonces eh, en el sector, en la comunidad, los jóvenes eh, se vuelven ociosos y se dedican a, a actos eh, delincuenciales. Eh, fui a Víctima de parte de esa violencia, eh, perdí mi brazo. Eh, un alumno, estando en estado, eh, supongo, de drogas, me atacó con un machete en el cual me amputó el brazo. En los cuales es una convulsión social donde no debe de haber un hermetismo, al contrario, se le debe brindar la oportunidad a estas personas para que salgan adelante. I actually wanted the children to become involved as well because they are the future of the community. And uh, children will come up with all sorts of surprising things if you ask them, you know, to contribute uh, creatively. My 
first goal in the plan to include children for this circle project was to locate art, music, and dance teachers who would spend a few hours a week over a six-week period with the children of Colinas de Suiza. We were fortunate to find José Luis Gutiérrez, an excellent art and music teacher who already had a full-time job teaching at the local high school, Instituto Villanueva, located in neighboring Dos Caminos. Fortunately, we were able to convince his supervisor, René Berrios, to sacrifice his teaching time at the high school and instead spend time with children in the three elementary schools. On the weekends, I engaged dance teachers Jesús Chinchilla and Miguel Muñoz to teach both modern and folkloric dances to interested children. One of the sewing circles was asked to sew 10 pairs of folkloric dance regalia for each elementary school. After learning the fundamentals of various media, the children were asked to find creative ways to express love and forgiveness within their community through drawing, painting, dance, and music for a presentation at the community fiesta. I consider that yes, it's a project and very effective because it allows the children to be in other activities. And it also needs more participation of the ciudadanía. But the idea was for everyone to work for the next six weeks towards a celebration of community. And so we planned for a fiesta what became an expo fiesta because of these small businesses. We would give the opportunity for the small businesses to uh, show their wares that they had produced over the last six weeks and to make others aware in the community about the capacity that existed in Colinas de Suiza. Significant opportunities exist for building capacity within Colinas de Suiza. While there are indeed opportunities for those of us from the outside to share our capacities with this and similar communities, in many cases, this process could be as simple as discovering the capacities that already exist within or near the community and encouraging the people with these capacities to share with their neighbors and community members at large. The Fetzer Institute was quite interested in incorporating uh, local sociologists and so I hired two sociologists to become involved with the project. One to work as actually a sociologist and the other to serve as a project evaluator at the end. In my experience in community and development, rural development, well, it's been a little more than 25 years in the work of resilient communities, in development of capacities, of fortalecimiento of capacities local capacities, para que las comunidades puedan eh, eh, desarrollar ¿verdad? todo su potencial. Si el agua es una necesidad de todos, entonces obligadamente la comunidad se vio en la necesidad de participar conjuntamente y eso logró unidad, cohesión social. Entonces esa cohesión social ya fortalecida con un proyecto del agua es como la semilla ¿verdad? para iniciar otros procesos que estamos celebrando la primera expo fiesta hoy sábado primero de junio. Recibámosle con un fuerte aplauso, por favor. Muchas gracias. 
What is it that drives me in doing these projects? Uh, this is a complicated question, which I'm continually asking myself. In 1998, I was impacted by the death of my oldest daughter to a rare form of cancer. I, I, the best I could tell is that the, the odds of contracting this particular disease is 1 in 80 million. Uh, it's a primary bone tumor that affects the cervical spine, so at nine years old, we lost our first daughter. And uh, it was a trying experience. I began to look at my own mortality and wonder, am I doing the right thing with my time? Am I spending it the way I want to be spending it, making the impacts I want to impact? And uh, at some point, I decided that I needed a change. La política nos corroe, la corrupción nos corroe, la violencia nos corroe, pero el amor y el perdón definitivamente tiene que ser la mejor herramienta de nuestro pueblo. Love and forgiveness is really that glue that holds our society together, and so I'm quite interested and so thankful to be involved with Fetzer, so thankful to be a part of that discussion and that discovery. Dos, tres.